scared. Yeah, it's a bit scary and a bit wet. It's all right. Are you all right there? Yeah, I'm good. Excellent. Okay, so what can we expect from this DVD? I mean, um, well, you know, the usual stuff you get on a DVD. I mean, the film is on it, I believe. Um, and all the extras, all the naked of, all that. But I think with this one, more than most DVDs, because it's Harry Potter, they make a little bit more of an effort. And there's a lot more interactive stuff uh, that kids can play with. And uh, I know there's a, a guided tour around my classroom, because I did that as like, extra, whole days extra filming. Uh, you know, while we were filming the other stuff, if we had some time off, we'd all go to another set a whole other crew, a whole other department and shoot stuff just for the DVD. Which you don't normally do, if you're the actor usually you're just on the set and you're just being filmed by another crew. The making of, which sometimes can be a little tedious because the making of a film isn't always that interesting. But, you know, what's it like as an actor, because you're, you're there to do the film, but uh, I mean, how do you view DVDs? Do you no, not at all, no. I, I think it's, I mean, I, I'm not as good at going to the cinema as I should be, and I actually watch most things on DVD. And, uh, and they're a great way of studying film if you're like a film student, you know, and that you can hunt around much more successfully than you used to be able to on videos. And uh, if you want to watch how it was made, sometimes I don't like that myself. I mean, I remember watching The Unforgiven recently, Clint Eastwood's film, and uh, I watched the making of it, and I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Certain films, but I think something like this you want to see, you know. Uh, Especially for children, I think to, to, to unravel the magic of how it's made uh, and to see exactly how it's done is, is enthralling for them. But it's, it's not something I do with every film I watch, but something like this, I think it's a, a great idea. You know. Is DVDs going to make them in their levels a lot more noisy? No. No. Why, um, why do you think DVDs are so noisy? Why, why also? Why do you think DVDs are so noisy? Know, because they're just the perfect way of watching a film, especially especially with the TVs we have nowadays. With such, you know, I mean, in, in my house I've got a you know big big wide screen with a big home cinema system, and you know you can watch it on your own sofa with a takeaway meal and an ice cream. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, as long as people keep going to the movies. But I mean, it's a it's a great way of watching films, and it's, it's and if you do want to then watch it more than once or you know go back and see how something was done and then watch how it was made and, 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 and listen to the commentaries and listen to the interviews of you know how it all came about uh, I know I'm a big fan of that with certain things it's uh, uh, you know I just got all the new Seinfeld series I'm a big fan of Seinfeld to watch all those the extras on the Seinfeld thing uh, you know, it's fascinating I'm not in the fourth movie I'm, I'm, I'm in the fifth but I'm in the fifth book, I don't know if I'm in the fifth movie, you'll have to ask the, the producers, but I'm assuming I'm in the fifth movie. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not in the fourth one, I, I, I don't appear in it. Oh, right. okay. I can't ask you about what it's like in that I have no idea, no. I haven't even been to the set. Okay, well thank you very much indeed. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, first of all, why is it important to hold a, a premiere for a DVD like this? Well, DVD is a huge portion of any, uh, a, a huge portion of revenue for any film. With something like Harry Potter, um, it's a big source of revenue. We will sell tens of millions of copies of this DVD, and frankly, it enables us to keep making these films at the level that we do because of the Thank money that it brings in. And for me personally, as a filmmaker, it's really important um, the DVD itself because it's how the film will live on. Um, you know, the film is in the theatre for four weeks, eight weeks, twelve weeks. But after that, how do people see it? They see it on the DVD. And for you as a producer, I mean, is it a bit of a headache trying to do everything? Because you're obviously making the new film at once and then you're doing the DVD. So how do you, I mean... You know, it's not a headache. It's a headache if I don't like the film. I love this film. I think I've also done a fantastic job. Um, I'm proud of it. Uh, I'm excited that it's in a... I'm excited about the DVD itself and I'm really excited that people are going to see more aspects of the film and how and, and, and how and how it's you know how it's made. I think that's really exciting. Now and um, this, this this film particularly now films like you're on had a very specific mark on it. What's Mike Newell like on the, the next one? Um, Mike is you know each film reflects the character of the director and I think the third the fourth is you know will be a Mike Newell film. Um, I think it'll be very funny. 
I think uh, the school is probably the most British of the, of, 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 of the schools in its field. It's a little bit anarchic and, and, and you know, we see a little bit more of, sort of the, the, the madness that is at all centers around the school, all the running around and the cheering and the pushing and the teams, all of that is a big, big, big part of it. Also, you know, part of the humor will come from the awkwardness of boys dealing with girls for the first time. Um, that's, you know, the kids are now teenagers and um, when the Beaubaton girls, which is the, this French school arrives, they're all girls. And when they arrive, the boys realize for the first time what's it like to be a boy and how much it can hurt. Now, I remember speaking to Alfonso about this, and he was saying that when they were doing this, this film, that uh, J.K. Rowling had just had the baby who was pregnant, yeah. and she didn't really involve herself yeah. that much. Is she involving herself a lot more in the No, course? exactly the same. She, she, you know, she, she, we send her the draft of the screenplay so that she it, so that she's happy with that to make sure that we've selected the right elements and to make sure that we haven't done anything to disrupt the anything that happens in book six or seven. We want to adversely affect those in any way. So we send them to her and, and you know, she's also there if we need advice and, 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 and you know, if we have questions about things. Um, so she's there for us, but she's not a constant presence. Now there was also some um, news reports that there was, you know, a terrorist threat. I mean, has that affected at all? No, we haven't. We haven't. I, I, I haven't been made aware of that. Okay. All right, no, it's not, I read an article <laughs> about it then. Yeah, no, I haven't been made aware of that. So there's no security measures or anything. We have, we have security leave, and we've always had security leave since from the first, from the, from the, from the studio from the first uh, uh, film on. It's continuing the same, exactly the same. And is there anything else about this particular new production that's going on at the moment uh, that's very different from the other Harry Potter? Well, each film has its own challenges. The fourth film, one of the challenges of the fourth film is that we are, there's a huge underwater sequence. And so to have Dan Radcliffe, we only have him for four hours of filming a day because of education and other, other things he has to do. We only have him for four hours a day. But to have him fill, act and express himself underwater, um, having an oxygen mask on, it's removed, he acts and performs, and the oxygen mask goes back on with 12 divers around um, as security to make sure nothing bad happens. That's challenging, um, but also fun. And I think that's one of the reasons I'm keeping doing these films, one of the many reasons, but is that it's still interesting, still exciting, and still challenging. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. So enjoy you the much. evening. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Too.
So, um, not only do you have premieres, you've got DVD launches. How do you feel about this? Well, it's great. Two parties a year, cause especially if you're like me, you don't get out much, you know. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you think? Oh, it's brilliant. I mean, getting a turnout like this for both of them in one year is unbelievable. It's really good fun. And, I mean, like, Harry Potter and Field seems to keep going, keep going. Why do you think that is? What is it about it? I think it appeals to all audiences, so everyone can appreciate it. And um, so word of mouth just spreads so much that you just can't get away from it anymore. And even if you don't like it, you've seen it. And, and you're going to tell someone that you've seen it, and it's just going to keep spreading. Yeah, and uh, they're about magic, and we all make a bit of magic in our lives. And um, I think, it, it, I suppose it takes us all back to being to being young and seeing, seeing the world through the, the kids' eyes. Well, I say kids, because they're not kids anymore. They? And I think the wonderful thing about the books as they've, as, they, as they've gone on, and particularly the third one, it's starting to deal with um, growing up and they're not children anymore, and dealing with adolescent issues, and like, recognising the other sex and dealing with all sorts of... So as they grow up, I think the stories get more interesting. I now, think what, adults can relate to the business as much as kids. We've got an owl escape again. Oh, yeah, well. oh, oh um, wow! <laughs> <laughs> no, no what, can you, what can you tell us about? You, you're on the set of Claude Bond at the moment, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So what can you tell us, I mean, what's different about this set with Mike yours and so? Well, Mike's the same as, as, uh, as Alfonso and Chris in the sense that they've, uh, yeah. they approach it with a great sense of fun and create a terrific atmosphere. Um, it's not different in the sense that, I mean, because of the stories, it's, it's, it's the stories that mature and, and grow and get maybe a little bit darker, and that's the only difference really, in the way they're doing it. Of course they've got their own style, but it's, uh, like yours, it's just as much fun as, um, as Alfonso and Chris were. So, uh, and what do you think the finished product's going to be? How different do you think that's going to be? It's, it's so hard to tell. As an actor, you, you, don't, you do your bit, and you, but you don't see... You don't see it on screen, and all you can see it. You just, uh, you just don't know when it feels good. It feels good because uh, they're very good at creating great, the great playground, aren't they? So. I mean, you spend so much time on it, and to, to finally see it at the end, you think, wow, we've, we've made that. And it's like it's a long time, but I'm proud yeah. of it. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great to be part of something like this. You know? Now the fourth film, uh, I was told by the producer that basically there's a lot more awkwardness of, between the boys and the girls. Yes, yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, I think Mike, obviously his interpretation, when he read the script, you know, and I felt it when I read the book, there's this really obvious sense of we're really starting to get into, um, you know, possible, um, sorry, uh, possible kind of, um, basically just being awkward teenagers, really. Um, you know, he, he's really playing on the fact that it's just so funny because basically no one knows what they're doing and everyone's really <laughs> embarrassed and they feel really awkward and it's very funny. It's brilliant. There's some brilliant scenes coming up in it. Excellent. That's what I like to hear. Thank cool. you very much. Thanks. Enjoy nice it. You. Thank you. Cheers. It's good to see you, mate. Yeah. How many times have you watched the prison like that? How many times? Prison at all? Prison at all? Yeah. Oh. Sorry, uh, the premiere song. 
Over eight. Awesome. And who do you put the people to Colin, my mates, my brother, my sister, and my whole family. Have a great day. Hello, Mr. Aiden. Aiden, I'm alright, how are you doing? Not bad, yeah. So you're doing lots of surreal things to Harry Potter. How's that doing? Uh, yeah, I'm on the GCCs. Uh, no, no, I mean like driving on a bus. Oh, right. No buses, please, because you can't use the footage otherwise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the bus. Yeah, yeah mate. Sorry. Yeah, really cool. Yeah, because you do, must have do, do lots of things in, uh, in Harry Potter, but how does that compare? Yeah, well, I guess, yeah. I mean, they always do do a really good job on these sort of events and that. They really do put a lot of time in it. You can just see, because it looks really cool. Yeah, definitely. Now, are you a DVD you know, fan? Do you have lots of DVDs? Yeah, I've got a lot of it. And, and what's, what's the beauty of DVDs? I don't know, they've just they got something extra in these videos. They've got special features, which are just really cool. Like, I suppose on this one, it's got loads. It's got, like, games, interviews, behind the scenes, and that's it's worth just for the special bit. And also, now, you're doing the new film. So, and I hear there's a bit of awkwardness, there's a bit of tension between the boys and the girls. I mean, how's that all working out? And is there, yeah. some, is there, is there any sort of, you know, love um, for your character? Well, and the, yeah, this fourth one's all about, sort of, like, there's a, like, a, the Yule Ball. And uh, we all have to wear sort of dress up in these dress robes, which aren't very nice. And uh, we've all got picked dates, so uh, there's a bit of uh, romance in this one. But, OK, well, thank you very much. Cheers. All right, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all right. How are you doing? Not too bad. Can't complain. No, no, definitely not. So, <laughs> I mean, what do you think about all this today? Oh, it's actually incredible. Like, such a uh, spectacular entrance coming in the bus and everything, so... It's pretty chill. Yeah, I know, it's pretty cool. You do premieres twice a year now, so I mean, uh, are you getting used to this sort of thing? Oh yeah, definitely. Like, the thing is though, whenever you walk down like red carpets and everything, you just get such an adrenaline rush. You're just like, ah, go <laughs> wired. But uh, yeah, like, that's really incredible doing all this kind of thing. Mm. Now, you're filming the full film at the moment. Yes. So, uh, is there any sort of, uh, you know, backstage gossip you can... Well, not really, no. Just, it's all having a laugh, chilling. So. How do you all get along now? Because you've been doing four films together now, and like, you know, you must to get to know each other a lot better. Do you, are you all like, you know, really close pals? Oh, yeah, definitely. Because, like, as you said, like, we all grew up together pretty much. Like, we went through everything together. Oh, we went through everything together and everything. So, like, like we all get on, like, we all have our laughs. So, so is it, I mean, like, how are the, how's the new director? How's Mike doing? Is oh, he... Mike, absolutely incredible, definitely. And I hear this a bit of awkwardness, you see, sort of picking the girls against the boys and stuff like that. Yeah, doing a little bit of dancing, so. How, how do you feature in all that? Pardon? How do you feature in all that? Uh, no, it's just James as usual, he's always messing around. So, uh, yeah, like, I enjoy it. So. And have you had a chance to have a look at the DVD yet? Oh, yeah, definitely. And, and uh, what's so special about the DVD? Well, like, uh, the way it's laid out, definitely. Like, the uh, extra scenes and everything, like, the bonus track, there's like, it's all laid out on the uh, Marauders map. So that looks absolutely incredible, definitely. And then, like, it has all the different classrooms you went to, and then you can uh, see the new uh, game and everything. So, absolutely incredible, definitely. Do you feel like you learned something from it? Uh, well, just it's more just like, oh my god, we still look like that. But uh, yeah, and then like the interviews and everything. Like, I always love to see what people have been saying before. So, that's always one of my favourites. Excellent. So. Well, thank you very much. Pleasure to meet you. Take, Take care. care. Enjoy the evening. Hello, how are you doing? You alright? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Oh, you're in a dry bit. Yes. <laughs> Move right in. <laughs> okay. Yes, that's a good idea. So how are you finding this all the time? It's great, isn't it? I mean, it's miserable weather, freezing cold, but quite good fun, you know? Mm. It's good to see everybody again, because I've been, I've been off doing other work, so it's, I've not actually seen the cast since about May time, so kind of getting back into it all. And, and catching up with everyone's been really good fun. Excellent. So, I mean, like, what's, what's so special about this DVD? I mean, like... Oh, it's Prisoner of Azkaban, it's Harry Potter. What, you know, what more could you want? It's every kid's Christmas present, I think, isn't it? But it's a good disc as well. I mean, it's a two-disc set, so it's got all the special features, you know, got deleted scenes on it, cast interviews, interviews with Alfonso, the director, and J.K. Rowling, and, and then there's a fantastic bit where you can go into, like, classrooms and do, like, 360-degree tours of it and looking to go and play with the sweets in the Honeydew sweet shop and stuff. So it's, it's a good package again. 
Now, are you a DVD mom? You do some I time? am. I am. I'm dreadful. I've got about 300 now in my collection. <laughs> What's I, so special about them? Maybe? I just love them. They're so much fun, you know, because you get all the, the get the commentaries and stuff. I, mean, I don't think we've got a commentary on this one, but you know, it's, no, I just like sort of the interactive side of it and being able to see what's been cut from films and, and getting all the little nit bits and sort of seeing what happens back scenes and stuff. Because it's it's always good. I mean, I've been I've been doing film now for four years, but I still find it all fascinating to see kind of how each different film operates on sort of behind the scenes stuff. So, so getting into the DVDs is always good. We like DVDs. Mm. Are you in the fourth one? I, I, I mm, good question. <laughs> as far as I'm aware, I'm not. I don't have an official line on this, but um, I've 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 not been doing any work yet. So um, we shall wait and see with bated breath. And how's life outside of Harry Potter at the moment? It's good. It's really busy actually. I'm running a theatre company now up in Norfolk where I live. So um, I'm busy with that. We've got sort of we've had a production tour and we just stopped that now for Christmas because we're all off to do pantomime and stuff. And then we're doing um, Oscar Wilde Salome starting in February. So so it's busy, busy. And yeah, pantomime in Derby this year. So Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Anyone from Derby, come and watch. All right, because <laughs> yeah. it's going to be good. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much, mate. Pleasure. Cheers. Take care. Have a good night. Thank you. And you too. All right. Fair enough. One of them. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's all good, it's all good. Where, where would you like me to sign? All right, my bad. So, okay, so, okay, so, yeah, the DVD launch. Are you getting used to all these premieres and launches and they're surreal? It's all, it's all, a, bit, uh, it's all a bit maniac, isn't it, really? Uh, well, they, they seem to, you go every year and you think, right, I know what I'm expecting, expect it, and they always double it, so uh, they always seem to smash your expectations, so it's best not to expect anything, really. Mm. Expect anything from this lot. I mean, <laughs> Quite wild. You must do some pretty surreal stuff on set, and so, you know, I mean, what's more sur uh, surreal, filming or doing the launches? It's this, to be honest with you. This is the part where you realise how big it is and uh, and how many people are interested in it. You wouldn't, uh, it's unbelievable, the, the, the fan base is through the roof. I couldn't mm. believe it. Now, you're doing the fourth one at the moment. Yes. Uh, is any work in a way? Any gossip from backstage? It's going to be better, that's it. <laughs> that's all I can give you, I'm afraid, my friend. No, I haven't seen any of it. Um, so I couldn't tell you what's going to be in there, what isn't going to be in there. All I know is what we've filmed so far is bloody good, so hopefully it will all be in there. Are there, are there changes from the book? I mean, are we, is, is there extra material that's not in the book? From... Um, no. Uh, again, I couldn't tell you for that from fact, because I didn't write the script, but uh, from what I know of it, no. I haven't read the book. I haven't read the fourth book at the moment. Um, I currently work through the script first, in the film, and then the book. So uh, I'm working through the film bit first. Mm. I studied the script where, very thoroughly. Now, the producer was saying to me before that, that one thing that Mike Newell's doing is really getting out this awkwardness between the boys and girls. Uh, is <laughs> he there... loves to do that, doesn't he? Yeah, no, is there awkwardness on set, you know, between no, the boys well, and the girls? They, they brought in this, the, the new, uh, new cast members, the, the Beau Baton girls and the Durmstrung boys. These are all older cast members, much older than any of us, you know, mostly 20, 18, 19. And so immediately there was a, uh, a sort of, ooh, look at that sort of thing. And uh, But no, he is, he makes sure that Blokes do not pair up with, with blokes, they make sure we all uh, sit next to each other, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. But yeah, it works. We're all chatting away happily as family, so it's all good. So life reflects art as, you know, art reflects the There you go, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the one I was looking after. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well said. Well, thank you very Cheers, much. Have a good nice night. to meet you. Oh, Cheers. Right. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Oh, no, extra first. Good, how are you? Sorry. Great to see you. So we're here. Yeah, okay. I'm in. Yeah. So that was a little bit of an entrance, wasn't it? It was pretty cool, no? Yeah, it was. Yeah. How is it to be in rainy London? Uh, uh, it's a special effects rain. Yeah. It's not really rainy. <laughs> Especially provided by yourself. Well, not by me, by the production, by yeah. Warner the Brothers. Yeah. So tell us, what, what else can we see on the DVD? What special effects do we get to see on the DVD? Well, it's the first time that Harry Potter goes behind the scenes. So you get to see how uh, stuff like the, the, the creatures were, were, were crafted from the moment, uh, uh, from the point of the conceptual drawings all the way to the final execution of them. And uh, it's a lot of fun to go through all, all, all of the different, uh, uh, the, the different stages of the process. And you haven't seen the kids for a while, have you? So what did you think when you saw them this evening? They're so tall. They used, they, they, yeah, no, they used nice to be shorter. And what about Rupert's hair? No, they, 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 Rupert's and what about Daniel's hair? Yeah. No, they are like long hair. I think they look really beautiful. And what about Emma? What did you think of her? Did you see how she was dressed? She's so cool, isn't she? Thank you very much. Hello, Alfonso. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Uh, now, I'm going to do little interview in English and then we'll just can you do some things in Spanish as well because we have a Spanish clients as we syndicate out. Okay. So, is that okay? I can't I'll do my Spanish, best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. 
Okay. So I mean, if you want anything, like say, repeat in Spanish, and I'd say, yeah. like, okay, that would be good. Yeah. So okay. I mean, um, how much involvement did you have in the, the, the production of the DVD? You know, a DVD like this is so complex; it's like another film by itself. So it takes like a year in the making. Uh, most of that year, I was either sh still shooting or doing post-production for the film. Uh, but uh, I was very involved with the makers of the of the DVD, uh, working in the uh, the different concepts and approving the signs and dropping ideas of what could be cool. But I have to say that this is an amazing DVD and all the credit falls into the, the, the guys who did the actual production of the DVD. I think they did, a, they did an amazing, amazing job. Uh, the part I was more involved, fully involved, was um, together with Michael Sarasin, the cinematographer. It was uh, in translating the, what you saw in the theaters into uh, uh, the, the, um, the digital, the, 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 the digital, the video format. You know, like uh, doing the color correction so the textures will be rep would represent what you saw in the theater. Mm. Now there are deleted scenes in in this film. Are there any scenes that you particularly think oh, I wish I would have, that would have gone in the film or anything? Or? Is you know it, it, what happens is that you're, when you're editing, yeah, uh, there are a lot of stuff that you love that you have to throw away. And now you have the, 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 cons the at least the consolation. They said, okay, uh, uh, it will be in the DVD. Um, well, the moment of shooting the scenes and then editing, you're very attached to those scenes. But now I see the deleted scenes and I say, wow, those were cool scenes, but I don't see how they would fit in the film. Mm. Like now the film has its own life and the life is the cut that was presented in the theaters. Mm. And how do you feel about not being involved with Harry Potter anymore? At this point, very, very relieved because I'm enjoying my time with my family. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I really miss, miss uh, the experience. I miss hanging with the kids every single day. Uh, all the people involved in terms of uh, from the talent to the technicians it becomes some sort of a family it's two years that you bond with them every single day mm. and and I miss them you know? mm. uh, on the other hand I'm very happy that Mike Newell is doing the fourth film I'm a big fan of, of, of Mike and, and I'm sure he's going to do the funniest film of all the Harry Potters because he has an amazing uh, sense of humor and amazing touch for comedy and uh, I'm looking forward to see that one. I know that everybody's very happy, the kids are very excited working with him and I know that uh, Mike is, 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 uh, is capturing the best performance ever of these kids. Mm. We do that one again in Spanish, is that right? Yes, okay. eh, extraño un poco el, 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 el universo de Harry Potter y más ahorita viendo a los chicos aquí. Eh, se crea como una familia con la que convives dos, dos años, no solo de la parte del talento, los actores, sino los técnicos. Y, y sobre todo hoy que llego acá y, y veo a todo el mundo, la verdad se lo extraño mucho. Por otro lado, Mike Newell está haciendo la cuarta película y yo soy un fan de Mike Newell. Yo estoy seguro que va a ser eh, eh, la película con, de las Harry Potters con más sentido del humor. Eh, y y del, por lo que he escuchado de técnicos alrededor me dicen que las actuaciones de los chicos son las mejores que ha habido hasta el momento. Entonces estoy muy, 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 estoy muy curioso, ya quiero ver la película. And can we just do the soundbite about the, the missing scenes, about whether you, you know, whether you regret not putting them in? Uh, uh, sí, eh, el, el DVD tiene ciertas escenas que fueron, que fueron cortadas de la película. Y uh, en el momento cuando, cuando estás editando, les tienes un gran cariño a esas escenas, no las quieres quitar. A estas alturas, ya que terminas todo el proceso, eh, son escenas que sigo viendo, y son escenas que me divierten mucho, que me siguen gustando, pero que ya no veo cómo hubiesen cabido en la película. Creo que, a final de cuentas, uh, 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 la película que se presentó en las salas, de tía, en la, en la, en la, en las salas es, uh, es la película, uh, uh, esa es la película. Uh, uh, inclusive yo veo esas escenas extra y me parecen que, no, que ya no caben en esa película. Okay, I have no idea what you're going to say, but anyway. <laughs> it's very, very rude, I hope. Okay, that... I hope not lots of swear words, rather. Lots. Can you tell that?
Who this man is? Michael Naiman. Hello, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. How are you? She's, she's the big fan. Of, she was playing your, your CD over and over oh. and over. No, no, wait, that's the wait. Tell me your name again. Michael Naiman, the composer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hello. But I, I think I met him before. I'm sure you interviewed him before or something like that. Okay. 